Anyways, now let me show you some of the refutations by White. How to continue if, for example, White decides to play the Queen's Gambit after pawn to d4 and then we play knight c6. Yeah, some of you will be writing comments to say, no, people don't go pawn to d5. The purpose of playing a gambit or a tricky opening, it is not really to hope for our opponents to accept our gambit. No, because at the end of the day, we still have to play chess. And so if white plays pawn to c4, well, this is the simplest of all. The right continuation here is just to play pawn to e5 and the ideas are bishop b4 check and then bring our queen's knight to g6 then develop the other knight on f6 let me show you the most played move in this position is pawn to d5 by the way there's no good reason for taking on e5 so bishop b4 first and let's check so white blocks the check with bishop d2 we just simply exchange bishops and then knight c e7 is what we play the knight was under attack and from here when you look into the database knight c3 is by far the most played move here we just play pawn to d6 pawn to e4 again is the most played move we go knight f6 bishop d3 and knight g6 the next move that we're going to play is just to castle short and if you look at this position very well it is the typical mexican defense which I presented in this video, which has popped up in the card above. Or you can call it the Black Knight's Tango. It doesn't matter. So this is how to play against the Queen's Gambit. If you start with the McKenna's defense. Okay. After pawn to d4, knight c6, white can also play knight to f3. Now after knight to f3, I recommend that you go with the Chigorin defense ideas. And here is why you need to respond with pawn to d5 and now we are officially in the Chigorin variation i have a full video on this opening so you can check it out on my channel if bishop f4 you can simply develop your knight to f6 but what you will see your opponents doing mostly is pawn to c4 right away this is the most challenging move and here i recommend that immediately you go with pawn to e5 just challenging white center both d takes e5 and knight takes e5 will lead to similar lines after which I recommend that you take with your queen's knight on e5 and push pawn to d4. But anyways, let me just hit the nail and show you what most of your amateur players will be playing. C takes d5 seems to be very challenging, especially on lower levels. Now here just simply take with your queen and if knight c3 attacking your queen, just go ahead and pin that knight on c3 then why to play something like pawn to e3 solidifying the center you take on d4 with your e pawn and these are the lines that you need to keep in mind when playing this line so e takes d4 is what you will see most of your opponents playing and again here i recommend that you just go bishop g4 so it's all about the pins in this variation by the way if bishop d2 by white you just simply take that knight because you don't want to lose your queen on d5 but if bishop e2 which is what they play most of the times you go knight f6 castle shot now remember that you are no longer pinning the knight so you should be very careful otherwise white is going to capture your queen which is why i recommend capturing this knight as early as possible and whenever you can so bishop takes c3 b takes c3 and castle shot look at how active our pieces are they are all out Next, we're going to centralize our rooks. The king's rook will come on e8 and the queen's rook will come on d8. As you can see, white is behind in development, so we should be good to go from here. And in case of anything, we always have queen h5 and queen a5. This is where we're going to be playing with our queen. And these are the most important stuff you need to know in the knight f3 refutation line. Anyways, let's look at the last refutations by white. Okay, now the question is, what if white plays pawn to d4 and then we start with knight c6 and instead of pawn to c4, white still plays pawn to d5, then we play knight e5, normal moves, e4, pawn to e6, f4, and then we take on d5. White can also play in this position, knight c3, not taking your knight. Here you just play knight g6 and you are good to go in this position. As you can see by the highlighted arrows, white can take our d5 pawn in three ways. It takes d5 for example. Here we just continue with bishop b4. I mean that's why we played pawn to e6 to open up the way for our dark squared bishop. Pinning the knight on c3, that is always good and we'll have a good game from here. The ideas are pawn to d6, knight f6, we castle short, life goes on. Now instead of e takes d5, white can also take with the knight 
Well again we can just play pawn to c6 taking advantage of this knight which is in our territory. So white has to go back and then we play bishop b4 again. We pin this knight. I mean that's the normal continuation. Bishop d2, pawn to d5. Intending to go d4 next. I mean pawn to d5 in most of these lines is very important and you should remember it anyways. So white plays pawn to a3 harassing our bishop. We play bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3 and then knight f6. If e takes d5, we castle short, d takes c6. Rook e8 check, an in between move, bishop e2, queen c7, we don't want to trade queens, bishop takes f6, g takes f6, makes sense because we are still putting more pressure on the f4 pawn. If pawn to g3, white loses immediately after queen takes on c6, directly attacking the rook on h1. Anyways, back to this position and if queen takes on d5 we just go bishop b4 again pinning the knight so bishop b4 is the first move you should think of knight e2 knight f6 attacking the queen knight d3 pawn to c6 again wanting to go pawn to d5 next a3 we take the knight and after knight takes c3 d5 again and by the way if pawn takes on d5 we can just take back with either of those highlighted pieces and we won't have any problem if pawn to e5 we play knight g4 if h3 we don't even go queen h4 check because we are going to lose a piece after pawn to g3 attacking our queen so we just play knight h6 to be safe but there's even a better move to consider here bishop f5 deflecting the queen from keeping an eye on the g3 square so that if white takes we play queen h4 check and if king e2 queen f2 check king d1 queen d4 check king e2 queen f2 check and from here the game can be a draw but if white gets greedy and plays something like king d3 it's almost over for him because knight 6 takes e5 check will surely win the queen after f takes e5 only move and queen takes f5 check Okay, so this is all for today. I hope I've given you enough ideas on how to play the Mechanus defense. And again, I didn't say things will always be moving smoothly. At the end of the day, you still have to play chess. But I just wanted to show you this interesting defense that you can try out against your opponents, especially in Blitz, Bullet, and Rapid games. And you will thank me later. And this is all for today. Before I end this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because that encourages me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one. And remember to check the link for my new website which is in the description down below where you can purchase my courses at very affordable prices. Okay, so in the next video, I will be trying out this defense against some really strong chess players on leeches random chess players of course just to demonstrate how practical and powerful this defense can be so please stay tuned and hope i will see you in that video thank you so much